Hi, this is Jan Reardon, and I'm here to present the Kindness Connection, Episode 2. Uh, we will have a Kindness Connection show on the third Thursday of each month, and we're very excited about that. Just looking at different ways to make Vermont an even kinder state and community than it already is. And uh, we have so many resources available to really be able to learn how to be kind on a much deeper level. And so today, speaking of just that, where kindness comes from a very deep level, um, I have the privilege of introducing you to my guest, Kathleen Corbanis. Hello, Kathleen Hello, Corbanis. Jan. How are you? Great, thank you. And Kathleen is um, not only a friend of mine, um, but just uh, she'll she'll be talking with you about her her multifaceted world and the and the roles that she has as a caregiver and a provider. I mean it. I don't want to uh, take anything away as far as Kathleen being able to say exactly what she does, but I can tell you, you know, as a friend, uh, what she has done for her daughter Martha is um, just unmatched. And, and it's amazing what she does know about uh, the system in Vermont when you're dealing with, you know, people that may have different disabilities. And she can talk with us a little bit about that and be a great resource for other parents as well. But I'll just turn this over to Kathleen and that way she can talk a little bit about her, her many roles. Thank you. Hello, Kathleen. Hello, Jane. Hello. So where do you start, actually? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I live in Essex, as you know. Right. Um, I'm a mom of, of two um, kids, Tommy and Martha. Right. Um, Martha has autism, and she's 22. Um, and I'm also the youngest sister of my brother, Lenny, who had a traumatic brain injury um, when I was 10 years old. Right. So um, I've been in the traumatic brain injury stroke world my whole childhood. And my family started Vermont's first uh, residential care home for TBI because my brother had a brain injury. And um, it was in 1979. And in those days, people were living in nursing homes right. at age 17 for the rest of their lives. So my mom um, really well, tell us if you don't that. mind. It's, tell us what happened um, to your brother Lenny to cause the, the traumatic brain injury, if you don't mind. Sure. Because I think so many people from this area will recognize, you know, Lenny Burke, obviously the name yeah. and, and his, you know, talk about being a legend. So if you could talk a little bit about him, which I know you love to do and nobody yeah. can do it better, but if yeah. you could do that, that would be great, the incident yeah. that took place. Yeah. I'm very honored and proud and very emotional when I talk about it. But so um, my brother was injured playing basketball, um, a, a personal foul that put him into a coma um, for a couple months. And so as a family, you know, young kids, my parents were in their 30s. Um, I was 10 and I have three other brothers. And so we all um, were devastated that Absolutely. his life would be forever changed. And right. so hopefully, we'd, hopefully he would live. So um, how long was he in a coma, Kathleen? Two months of uncertainty, two months You're, of uncertainty yeah. and two months in 1979, 1980 of of care that does not exist that did not exist then that exists now yeah, absolutely that's so for sure. thankfully um, we're very grateful that he had such an amazing neurosurgeon and um so he woke up from a coma a very different personality and um and we're very grateful he survived yes um so um being a young girl i i think i skipped most of sixth grade i i lived in california with my mom while um well, she was in a rehab hospital with him because oh, I she couldn't, realize we couldn't that. leave him there. Right. You know, and he was 17. So when my mom was there, she really educated herself on how to start her own residential rehab home because he needed a long-term care facility and one did not exist. Right. Um, and we did not want him living in a nursing home. So we had many family meetings you know, we're going to go for this. It's going to be hard on us. You know, are you guys game? What, you know, can we do this? And and so we really came together as a family unit to um, to really support my mom and, and groundbreaking. So she started a nonprofit, HIS Independence, where she would help other families. I see. Exist today. Right. Um, and she's just started learning. It's called the Rancho Los Amigos scale. Um, she started learning how to um, build a program for somebody who had a TBI. Oh, that's fabulous. Um, Dr. Savage, who was not a doctor at the time, was my brother's special educator who taught him how to read again and how to go back and graduate from high school because right. he was, you know, he was a senior. So he ended up going back to high school, graduating the next year with his diploma, walking down 
um, probably was oh, one of the most emotional days absolutely. of my life. Absolutely. I was in seventh grade. Right. Um, and um, he walked and graduated with my brother below him, Kevin, in his class. Wonderful. So it was quite remarkable to graduate on that gymnasium floor that he had been injured on. Right. And speaking of the gymnasium floor, if we could, and this is a, a huge fast forward, but just a few years back, the event that took place on the yes. on the floor. So here we can talk about that as well. Yeah. Um, so the community has been amazing to our family. Right. Um, and actually, Yvonne Daly is the author of my brother's book um, called The Bend in the Road which is um, different stories of, of really my mom telling the story of what she went through, really talking to the neurosurgeon about different techniques of trying to get him out of his coma and things like that, and then building the business, and then many interviews of our clients um, and how their lives have been affected. Um, and then an interview of me and my brothers of how our lives were affected. It, um, so the community... Um, honored us during my brother's coma, raising money for our family to pay hospital bills and help us send him to, he went to Virginia and California for rehab. So we didn't have GoFundMes then. Right, exactly, you know, but the GoFundMe community didn't rallied exist, around, the, which is what- these uh, Lenny Burke days. Yes. Yeah. Jack Healy on the radio, who's an amazing um, voice, and the principal, it was Dave Walk, who was at Castleton for many years. Right. Um, and so all these people gathered, and and, um, and I always cry when I talk about this, but um, they were saying, you know, I was just a young girl, and they were saying kids were coming in with their piggy banks. Oh, boy. And it kills right me today. Right from the heart, like, I, I know. Goosebumps. I mean, and, like kids were yeah. coming in their piggy banks because when a, you know, when a big basketball star gets injured, it's small town, you know. Right. The love is and, just pouring and it was out. Beautiful, so. Right. So the universe would have it that my brother woke up from his coma the second day of the Lenny Burke day, um, either the day before or the day of my other brother's birthday, but all of a sudden he woke up. Oh you know? my goodness. We had said goodbye to him twice. He wasn't going to make it. You need to say your goodbyes. He's not going to make it. You need to say your goodbyes. And where was the he when he woke rallied. up? Was they he still... raised money. Everybody's praying and, and, and all of a sudden he wakes up. And, um, and was that in California? That was at the Rutland Hospital. Oh, that was down in Rutland. Okay. Yeah. So bring it years later. So that was 79, 80. Years later, um, my brother passed away actually in 2018. Right. So I believe it was in 2017, the community honored us again. Uh, we had this night at the Paramount in Rutland where, um, where um, I can't remember if my brother's book was out then. Sorry, my memory. But um, we had a panel of um, the people that were there at that time. So right. we had Father Lavalley, who was the um, priest at, um, the principal at our high school at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, Dave Walk from Castleton, Dr. Savage, who was my brother's special educator, who became a world-renowned TBI expert. Oh, my goodness. Building curriculum in London and, and all over the world just because he, started he delved here. into my brother figuring out how his brain needed to be taught. Right. And so he opened up this can of worms that didn't exist. So anyways, the community had fundraisers without us knowing. We, we didn't know any of this was going on. Oh, that's so beautiful. So we so had this beautiful. panel where we all spoke at the Paramount, and then they gave us this big picture of the basketball court at MSJ, and they renamed it Lenny Burke Court. Right, right. And so they bring out, oh. they bring out this big poster board, and we're all kind of confused and we're looking at it, and then we're like... So you didn't have any idea? We didn't even know they raised money, and, oh. and so they did it again. And right. so they... Um, they renamed the basketball court Lenny Burke court. Right, right. So they honored us with the unveiling of it. Not that night at the Paranel, another night. Exactly, <laughs> Yet right. another night. And so we all went to um, MSJ, Mount St. Joseph Academy in Convent Avenue. And um, you were there. Yeah, I know, exactly. And that was what I was thinking of as far as feeling that love yeah. and the warmth when you I were there. walked in. And you were all there. And the court was just, you know, yeah. introduced as the Lenny Burke court. I yeah. mean, it was you know, just an amazing vibe inside of that gym. And there was so many people and yeah. so much love. And then yeah. when we talked recently, you said that was the first time really that you could feel how that love had just stayed with you guys. It was like wrapping around your family and holding you yeah. so close and they never let you go. Yeah, it's it, incredible. It was such a beautiful story. Yeah, it's oh incredible. my goodness. It's incredible. And then at the time, obviously that was, you know, maybe what, six or seven years ago. Matt was yeah, we, playing basketball high there. school, yeah. right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it had to be five or six years ago. So, 
at the same time, meanwhile, as you mentioned earlier, your daughter is Martha, who does have autism, and you've been working endlessly and tirelessly as far as Martha's barn. And if you could talk about that project as well, because I don't want to run out of time on okay. everything that you've done because of what you and Lenny really went through and what you went yeah. through with your family. Thank you. Yes. Um, so um, I just want to say my brother passed away, um, and that night of honoring him um, at the basketball court with our family was an incredibly healing moment oh, for yes, our family. Yes, Because he had stage 4 cancer and no one knew. Um, because he had a short-term memory problem. We didn't even really tell him he... Sure, it's days, nice that you didn't you know, have to, right? You know, we knew he, has, he only had a few months and a few weeks, and he kept out living his life expectancy in right. true Lenny fashion. He lived <laughs> like about he did two when years he was in, later, right. of course. Yeah. <laughs> like you um, lost him twice during yeah. the coma. Um, no, not going to happen. But that night of, the, of being on that really painful court exactly. and looking up at the audience, oh. and, um, and they were honoring him while he was alive, and it's so yes. important to honor people while they're alive. Oh, Kathy, you know, I'm glad you said that. That <laughs> gives know, me chills. We don't always honor people no, when they're alive. No, we don't. No, and we it's, think it's, it, but we don't necessarily yeah, act yeah, on it. Yeah. And when you talk about deep kindness, that's acting on it. It's yeah. not just saying, you know, it's cool to be kind. It is. Yeah. It really is. But you need, you know, it's the it's the motion that you, you yeah, put in yeah. place. So it was just remarkable that that all happened. Yes, and, um, yes, absolutely. He was so proud, and he was just oh, the what most a humble tribute. guy yes, anyways. Yeah. But, um, what a tribute. Seen that part. I know. Um, but anyway, so back to Martha. So, um, so I had a different childhood than most have um, because of my brother's accident, and my mom, um, I traveled a lot with her and, and did OT and PT with him. Right. As a twelve-year-old, <laughs> that you know, exactly right. therapy. Yeah. I love doing it. Like they always say, you get your self-worth from um, in your teenage years. It's and I'm like, very, okay, I yeah. must have gotten my self-worth in my teenage years from being a caregiver to my brother. There's Absolutely. no doubt about it. Right. Because I really no, love that caregiving. Forms you. Right, and yeah. that forms who you are at the core. Yeah, yeah. Those are so, vulnerable um, years. So, um, so I started Martha's Barn um, with a couple friends, Sharon O'Neill. Um, who works at UVM? Right. Um, long history in foster care and um, and kinship program. So really great background. Very nice. And Andrea Lambesi at the time was a special educator at Essex. Who, right. Who since opened Aunt Dot's Food Shelf. Oh. So she she stepped off our board at that time. Yes. And we had another board member step in, Kaylee Flynn, who was started out as Martha's. Um, caregiver at the Howard Center, just graduating from UVM. Mm -hmm. Then she became a licensed behavior analyst, BCBA. Now she lives in Brooklyn, oh. has her own BCBA. Oh, wonderful. Um, yeah, brilliant mind. And yes. BCBA, if you don't know what that is, it's um, the science of applied behavior analysis changes behavior. Right. So the treatment for autism is education. Yes. You know, um, so um, my daughter grew up in this amazing school district, which I love. Um, and did a lot of applied behavior analysis, and so she learned a lot of really great skills. Yes. And so as she entered um, young adulthood, um, she doesn't, she's not very verbal, but she will tell you what she likes and Wonderful. doesn't like. So I would always say to her, never knowing I would get an answer, because she doesn't have the ability to have a lot of back and forth conversation. Right. And I would say to her, Martha, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because you ask kids that. Exactly. And she would always say a farmer. Yeah with like the most exuberant glee and certainty and certainty yeah like and of she's course like, she's she, gonna be a farmer i mean she's yeah. unbelievably when she's happy she's really happy right and um so every time you ask her she's she's exuberant about it and um and so years go by she's still saying she wants to do that and so i said okay you know let's let's do this so alex Corbanus, my ex-husband and I are planning for her long-term care for right. her. And I, and I knew it was going to be a challenge because I knew what my mom went through for my brother. Exactly. And Vermont does not have long-term care for adults with developmental disabilities because we closed Brandon Training School in 1993, right. which I'm glad they did, but now everyone is in the community. And so it's up to families to um, and your agency to find your staff and create a program, and it's an enormous amount of work for people. Right, I mean, the closest facility would be in New Hampshire, maybe? I mean, nothing yeah. closer than that. There I mean, isn't any, we, in we anywhere in Vermont. We shouldn't be sending anybody out of state. Exactly, right. You know, we should not right. be There's... sending anybody out of state. And my daughter went through that. 
which I don't want to talk about. No. It's a painful thing to talk about for me. Right. But the, it's, the need that exists is it's critical. A complete, well, and I and I work so hard, and I, I bought this house from Martha Corbonis, my mother-in-law, and um, and planned. I'd, I'd planned everything. I'd gone by the book. I'd planned it all. Exactly. How we were going to support her and how we would leave the house in a trust for her. And, and then my daughter goes into crisis, and she has to leave the state. So it's really, you know, just awful that that my daughter had to leave the Experience. state. Absolutely, for all of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, so in building Martha's Barn um, with our board, right. just talking about like what what can we create? What is the niche that needs to be filled in in, exactly. in Essex? Right. And so um, our property is agriculturally zoned. Which Wonderful. is perfect for Martha wanting to be a farmer. Absolutely right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we, we kind of started this little Martha grows. Um, Over we, here we, had, we have yeah Martha's, Martha's barn. barn. Yeah. And then actually yeah. just you know to give a shout out to the website so people can go and see all the amazing things that you've put in place yeah. as you're getting ready to yeah. keep yeah. that that barn going. So we going. don't have a barn yet. Right. Um, we are hoping to build a multi-use barn, um, which our our tax account is for gardening. And so our goal is to give vocational opportunities for people for adults with disabilities um, to come to run a farm stand, exactly, and, and things like that. And then the multi-use barn part will also be because I know the need, exactly. So I kind of know how to create a model, sustain it, and meet the need at the same time. So there's a young boy who is following in Martha's footsteps of being out of state. He's in oh. Pennsylvania right now, mm -hmm. out of state, and he's 15. And um, he is who Martha was at that age, being away from his family. Exactly, right. And so, um, so we want to build an upstairs apartment for him where he lives with a caregiver. Downstairs is classroom space. I have a great relationship with my school district, Essex, with SD Associates, the behavior program. Um, and then that multi-use space will be school for him during the day. He'd, he'd live on the premises as well as... Um, we have a, a animal stall as part of our on our website. You can see the right. um, you can see the architect, um, the architectural model. The renderings, perfect. Yeah. Well, so what I was going to say is, it, there's nothing like this, obviously, in the state of Vermont. Not even on a not residential, but maybe you know, drop in daily type of activities. Nothing really along these lines not, at all yet. Not as far as yeah. like a um, career path. As a career path and a like a social recreational get together safe kind of space. Right, right. Um, and and that's just, why we did it. Because, exactly. And it just know. seems as though, even though I know you've exhausted many, many different resources for funding, I just have to believe there's a grant, again, being Vermont and a pilot program that we could really have this model put in place, especially with the foundation you've already yeah. organized. And to be able to have something like this be that pilot for the United States where you can show, again, what can happen when a community comes together and, and kindness is involved. Right, right. I did write a grant, which did not get accepted. Okay. Um, and um, I kind of think of that as, well, maybe that's not the right time for us. Right, or there's and so many different grants. What's happening now is the cost of lumber went up so high. Right, right. And so our, you know, our $500,000 amazing multi-use barn is going up to 750 exactly there's a, and so it's like uh, so um so maybe the time because now things are coming back down again i'm, I'm hoping things so will come maybe back down. Yeah. now there's another opportunity yeah. for a different grant yeah. or multiple grants to get smaller amounts but i just right. have to believe given as you say this essex community and the school system uh that we would be able to have something like this that would basically fill you know, and then a need immediately. It's not as yeah. though we'd have to wonder whether or not it would work out. I mean, there's right. just so many benefits right. to it for, obviously, for the individual that's suffering with the, you know, whether it's autism or any type of disability, and then for the family. And, you know, it just would solve so many problems as far yeah. as, you know, having a quality of life that they deserve. It's a great model. Exactly, yeah. yes. There are a few um, residential, but not nearly enough. And I know there's a group of about 80 parents that, um, that are working toward really changing the system in Vermont so we can have sustainable homes with groups of people. Um, That's beautiful. Because right, right now it does not exist and it's f absolutely frightening. It sure is, yeah. yes. It keeps me up at night, it, absolutely, absolutely frightening. Right. So I wanna share Martha's house um, and kind of get a group going there. Right. And, um, anybody who is lucky enough to have a piece of property um, let's just start building models and that's kind of exactly. what I would love to do. Right. Um, 
easier said than done because the system has to work to do that. Exactly um, right. But we have a great relationship right, has, with the Howard Center. Yes. So we kind so of that collaboration with them. could yeah. work out yeah. obviously so well. Yeah. You know, I think obviously there's you know not only is there a need for you know this to happen right away, but it's it's pretty much the same as you know child care when there there isn't any infant care around and you just there's so many people waiting and waiting and waiting and you have to do something about it right. and here's the chance to just start moving in that direction and I think as things grow then the foundation's that much stronger right and parents are powerful voices exactly and they need to be heard we we know we know how to work within a budget <laughs> yeah. we do we know budget neutrality we we know what's needed exactly we know what corners can be cut and um and i would think just yeah. economies of scale having a model like this would be financially beneficial for the state of vermont versus you know some of the services that you know may not be available right now but you know, it's due to cost yeah and, and there I, could I, be a better way i think people don't know and we should talk about it like that's why i'm talking i want to talk about it i don't think people know that like my daughter does not really have a long-term solution. Right, no, I don't think ever. anybody would think that. No, yeah. I think we would, uh -huh. you know, we're in Vermont again, so, we I think mean, just the opposite. You wanna know where your tax dollars go. Sure, right. You wanna know what Medicaid pays for. Right. There's such a stigma with Medicaid and, and um, I'm always happy to, to share our story, but you know, it only pays for a billable hour. Right. It doesn't build a structure. And so um, it's, it's, you literally have to build it yourself. And how do you do that when you're really, really exhausted? Right. Well, you've <laughs> and, done um, that. And, and in the and, weeds. And, right. And, I know. And but being I mean, a parent and caring right. and trying to work. And it's, right. It's, um, so that's why collaboration is so important. Right. And the resource that you are for so many in the community, too, is such a gift, yeah. Kathleen. Yeah. Thank you. I, I absolutely love it. I um, I really do. I, I work taking people with, um, care of people with traumatic brain injury and stroke now at our family business. Right. And I love it. I love. Um, so your family business is where Lenny was? Yeah. He was right there where you're working now. Yeah. Not the well, same house, but right. yes, same town. Down. Yeah. Walling. And, and how many houses total did you say? Um, we have three licensed and my brother Kevin has two. Oh, with just beautiful. Women living there. Yeah. So. Um, and that's, they're, they're all in Vermont? They're all in Vermont. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. So we we honor his legacy every day, and I don't know if I mentioned Jen, but I'm very honored to honor her legacy. Thank as you well. so much. And and what um, I love in in talking today and and any time with you is the fact that we have that connection of their souls just being so kind. And and yeah. when you have somebody like that in your life, it changes you forever when they yeah. exist and and when they you know are. Or kind of an energy around you. It, yeah. it doesn't really. We're really change. lucky. We are so lucky. <laughs> People when, don't know it's hard no, and painful. I know, but we're you, really lucky. We are, yeah. and you don't realize that. I, certainly for me, even being, you know, like when you're younger, you just don't. Uh, sadly, at least, you know, understand that. And then all of a sudden, when you experience it, you're just so grateful for that type of a right. connection, right. and to have somebody with so much good influence uh, the world in such a positive way after they're gone as well as while they were here. Right, you don't right. like to just have it always be after, but the combination, yeah. it doesn't get better. You can yeah. only hope that you can have that type of a legacy. Yeah. And we're, we're both very blessed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I love the yeah. show and I love, yeah. I hope that other people start realizing like, wow, if I count my blessings, I, I really have all these really great things going on in my life. Exactly, yeah. it's yeah. so true. Yeah.